Hi everyone. I am going to talk to you about doing the ironer method and show you what my preferences are for doing the iron-on method for the mint decoupage papers that are here. And I'm going to talk to you about the types of finishes that you can put on, if any. So I'm going to talk to you about the uh, putting no finish and when you can put no finish. So the first thing we're going to do is get some, you can use any kind of wood glue, PVA, Mod Podge, something like that. If you're doing the iron-on method, don't water it down, okay? So when you're doing the other method, you can water it down. When you're doing this method, don't water it down. We're just gonna get it like this and straight onto that little sucker. And we're gonna make sure that it's got a really good coat, okay? So you're just gonna pour it on, make sure that it is on your piece everywhere and as evenly as you can possibly get it, okay? Brush it out. You're gonna do this two times. So we're gonna have two layers of this. This I think is the best, best ultimate Everyone has their own thing. I've said that before. Everyone has their own methods of doing things. I think this is what works best for these beautiful, beautiful papers. All right, so we're just going to brush those out with a flat brush. We've got a flat uh, anisoline brush, synthetic. You're just going to leave that to dry. Okay, we're going to leave it to dry. I've got one here that's got one coat and that is drying because I'm going to show you two different methods. I'm going to show off finish, that is, two different methods of finish. And then I'm going to do this third board with no finish. So I'm just going to pour this on, same way. Make sure you've got a really good coating. Okay, now of course you're going to use this iron on method to get a really straight, beautiful, flush finish, no crinkles. I love the crinkle effect, as you know, and I think uh, it certainly has its place for some pieces. Sometimes you might want to do a really straight finish, so this is how you're going to do it. We're going to... Let those first coats dry on those three boards and then I will be back. We'll do the second coat. We're going to let that dry as well and then we're going to start the ironing on fun. And that's it. I shall be back in a minute. First coat's dried. There we go. We're going to put on second coat for everything. Just another one exactly the same way as you did the first. It's like the magic of television, isn't it? Okay, plonk it on. So we're gonna give this a really, really, really good base and something really good to stick to because we don't wanna have to muck around. Everything is fixable, it is, trust me. But we don't wanna have to muck around if we don't have to. Uh, when we haven't put on enough of an adhesive. All right, so second coat's on. You can feel, even as that goes on, that it feels uh, much thicker again. We're going to let that dry again, and with the magic of television, we'll be back again when this is dry. I'll see you in a minute. We're back again and they're all dry. They have had, though the three boards that I've got here have had two coats of, what have I got here? The interior wood glue. Okay, any kind of good wood glue will do PVA. Just a thicker kind of glue. Don't water it down like you would uh, if you're doing just the standard method. 
All right, so we got that. Our board is ready to go for our iron-on method. I'm going to grab, actually I might grab, I've just cut up a few of the A1, so this is the balloon, and I'm going to lay this down here. I didn't cut it up perfectly, so it doesn't fit this board perfectly, but that's fine. There's a tiny bit here, and uh, it goes over on the sides, but then I'll be show, able to show you how to sand those off. So you're just going to lay that down <clears throat> flat on there. You're going to grab your baking paper like so. This is just the non-sticky stuff that you'll put at the bottom of your pan when you're baking, if you bake, if you cook. I don't really, but I know what it is for decoupage, so that's all that matters. You're going to get your iron, you're going to make sure it's on, oh, we want it on about a medium heat and we'll let that heat up a bit. I've had it sitting here for a little while, okay. So we want a medium heat, I want this down nice and flat and there we go, it's just warming up now, not too hot. Start in the middle and start pushing. It's probably a little bit hot, I think. You don't want it to stick. So you know when irons are really hot and they can stick? And particularly, um, we don't have water in this. You don't want to have water in it. So it's a dry iron. There we go. So you just want it to glide on really nicely. Give it a little bit of pressure and, you know, push it down. We want it to be super flush and beautiful, like so. And then you're just gonna keep working that. I'm gonna do this for the three boards. So there's two things I wanna accomplish in this video. One is to show you how to best do the iron-on method. And the other is to show you the types of finish that you can do with that, that work best, I think. Um, if you want to decide to do a finish at all because I'll talk to you more in depth about that and how it's actually not always necessary with this paper to do a finish when you are well not just when you're doing this method but we're talking about this method so when you're doing this method it's not crazy necessary it just goes on so beautifully beautiful beautiful I'm going to finish this one I'm going to show you the one and then I will go off again like magic and I'll do the other two. I'll come back and we can start the finishes. But this is so quick and easy and God, they go on nicely. Just perfect. Perfect, perfect and beautiful. You may have drawers, you may have a top of something. This applies to all of those things. Now, honestly, if that is not perfect and beautiful, I do not know what is. So, there she is. Just crazy, crazy flush. Stuck down beautifully. It's got an excellent base. It's got those two coats of the wood glue on there. I will sand those off. Oh, I was almost going to put that straight on top. Don't do that because it'll burn your paper. But, you know, that's another video that I may do at some point. I have done a piece before where I have intentionally burned the paper to make it look particularly aged. Uh, so I'm, I may run through that with you. We can start doing, you know, moving away from the kind of basic how-to's and onto the more experimental, creative kind of applications of these papers. Just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Perfect and gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna do the three. 
uh, I will sand off I'll sand off the sides and then I'll be back in just a minute okay I have a change of heart about the third one so on the last one uh, which happens to have one of my hairs stuck in it because that's what happens to this thing but anyway that's a nice little DNA addition to this board isn't it I am going to use uh, one of the A3 papers so that you can see what they look like rather than just the chopped up kind of version so I'm going to use the uh, Renaissance flowers here here in the A3 and this is how he comes da, 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 da. like so oh it's beautiful isn't it beautiful I'm gonna place that down I might try and get that top flower in there it'd be nice to have an actual really nice example which so clearly we're gonna miss the bottom half uh, but that's fine that's absolutely fine I'm gonna plunk this down let's get to ironing I'm gonna start nicely in the middle don't worry about the creases when you unfold them because the creases will come out when you iron and even if you're doing the other method you can uh, give them a quick iron first before you put them on and you can either use baking paper over the top or just a tea towel or something just a really quick light iron will get any of those creases out this one's gonna look nice isn't it so let's do that one so i'm going to show you the sanding and everything on this one so i've done the other two boards um, ooh. i suspect that the top of my board was not dried perfectly but that's fine absolutely fine you really 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 do preferably when you're doing this method I'm obviously doing a bit of a hurry up and doing three boards at once um, let your glues dry really really well okay before you start this method I literally have put them on grabbed the hair dryer tried to hair dry them etc and waited till they're just kind of touchable and then go on for it um, oh, can you see that and you would work a little bit more slowly than this too I mean clearly you can do it this quickly but you probably want to be just a little bit you know a little bit slower more precise about what you're doing when you're doing it it's very satisfying this one this is the only thing I use an iron for I don't know about you I've got four irons and they're all at work <laughs> I don't even have one at home so my poor kid anyway. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit wet up here a little bit uh, yeah not completely dry that doesn't mean it's gonna stick that just means it's not quite as flush for example as this first one that was sitting the longest so it was the absolute driest but we're still gonna get an absolute idea of what we're doing that's gonna do for our purposes and oh, there we go that is a pretty decoupage paper, isn't it? So I'm just going to sand off the edges. Super, super, super easy to do. Okay. Um, get a pretty coarse grit uh, sandpaper and go for it. So you're going to, you know, do it downward so that you're not going to pull the paper up. I think I showed you this in the last video, but I'll show you this one anyway. Super, super, super easy to do. Down like that. And there goes your first. You can see how flush and clean that is. Okay. Really easy to do. 
you might want to keep that because it's very special. Uh, and I'll just do this edge. If you've got glue that's popped over the side, like mine has, that'll just sand off, so that's absolutely fine. I don't worry about that. And that. One last one. And done. Okay. Oh, I've got another side. <laughs> it's not done. Now it's done. And this is what you wind up with. Oh, Lord above. How beautiful is that? That's a super beautiful image. So, love it, love it. Now, as I said before, these papers, and you can see, definitely, you can see, they've got a coating on them. If these are on the front of drawers, for example, or a little cabinet or something, they do not, they don't need a finish necessarily. They're very hard wearing. They've got a coat already. Super, super, it can't get easier than that, not having to put a finish on. As I said, you may, if it's on top of, for example, you know, I've had a few people do the tops of desks or I did a top of a table, that type of thing, if you want to do that and you want to you know, put a really substantial finish on there, then go to town. Oh, how pretty is this image? Uh, there's three ways to do it, okay? So the first way I'm gonna show you, so we're going to, let's say this one here, just for argument's sake, oh no, whatever. This one, this one, for argument's sake. This is the other one, the second one that I did. We're gonna leave that with no finish, okay? Perfect, perfect, beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna leave with no finish. We're gonna imagine, look, you're not scratching it, you're not anything, nothing. Scratch, 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 nothing. It's not going anywhere and it's not scratching. It's already got a coat. They're amazing, amazing. I wanna do the top of something. Rock on, do the top of something. This is just a spray finish, okay? So it's an oil-based finish, and it's just a spray. If you're a bit toxic, you should probably put a mask on. <clears throat> I've got a mask, obviously, because we have to wear masks. But I'm just gonna spray it out. You just wanna put on two to three really light coats, okay? Because you're trying to get a finish on there, so when you put, let's say, a water-based finish on top of that, um, that, because I'm gonna do one with an oil-based finish, but when you put a water-based finish on top of this, you don't really want the water-based finish to reactivate your freshly done board. Okay, so it needs a bit of a protection, a layer in between. I'm just gonna get this. You're gonna give it a light coat. That's it. You're gonna do that about three times and just let it dry. That really does stink, okay? So we're gonna let that dry. There we go. Put that aside to dry. My Lord. This one, which is the other board we are going to do. That, oh, I just got that with the spray finish. I can feel it on there, the remnants of it. That's fine. Anyway, I'm going to show you uh, the oil-based finish, okay? So not your standard water-based lacquer. This is an oil-based finish which obviously means you can get it in uh, really glossy. So oil-based finishes give you a really glossy look and they are very, very, very hard drying. Okay, these are the benefits. There we go. Just gonna plonk it on. Make sure your brush isn't wet because obviously water and oils do not mix. And you're just going to brush it 
on like so. Make sure you get a good coat. And get everywhere. And here we go. We're just going to let that dry. Okay. I do love an oil-based finish, I have to say, even on furniture sometimes. If you want something really glossy or really, really, really hard, hard, hard wearing, super hard wearing, then an oil-based finish is brilliant. And because it's oil-based, it's not going to reactivate the glue, which is water-based, underneath your paper. Okay, this is why we use the oil-based. Okay, because you can see... If you remember from the other video, when you put a wet finish, a water-based finish on top of this, it reactivates the glue underneath and then it goes uh, slightly crinkly again before it dries and comes out. This, nothing, okay? It does not do that at all because it's not reactivating that glue, okay? So this is a really great way to finish. <clears throat> you can do that as many times as you like. Two or three finishes on that, if you like, in the oil-based finish. Love that. They take a while to dry, is the thing, but they're a great, great finish. You can get the oil-based in, um, it doesn't have to be gloss. You can get it in satin and uh, semi-gloss usually. This is not going to be dry. Ooh. Might be dry. Hold on. We could maybe, you can see the same thing applies. It's not reactivating, <clears throat> it's not reactivating the glue underneath because it's oil based, okay? So you can see, this is a satin finish. This one. And you just do that again. Oh, can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> That's it. Okay, nothing huge. Just do it like that. Don't try to do, you know, some really crazy, crazy finish on it. Just do that. A nice light coat two, three times. I'm going to come back after I've done it the third time. Again, <clears throat> you don't even need to do a water-based finish over the top of this. But if you want to do one so that you've got lots and lots of coats to finish, this is what I suggest you do first, okay? Do a spray first so that when you do do the water-based finish, it's not reactivating your glue. This is going to look pretty, isn't it? I will be back shortly. Oakley doakley. So the oil-based, look, it takes forever to dry oil-based. Uh, so this is still the one coat. I've been drying and drying and drying it, but I really don't want to put another coat on. But what I do want to show you is that it has not uh, crinkled, come up, moved, nothing, nothing, because it's not reactivating the water-based glue underneath, okay? So you know this is the first coat when you get the second or third coat or, you know, just the one coat, whatever it is, on there. Nothing, nothing is going to do anything to that really flush, straight, beautiful finish. Okay, gorgeous. It's going to stay like that. That is an excellent way to do it. I love it. That's part of the balloon paper, in case I didn't say. Uh, this one, that's got no finish. As I said, I've shown you, scratch, 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 scratch. It's not doing anything. It's not going anywhere. You're not going to scratch it. You'll know exactly what I mean when you get them. It's already got a coating on it, so it's not absolutely necessary that you put a finish on. Okay? Scratch, scratch. Nothing. Not going anywhere. Nothing. I don't even have to look to know. Nothing's happening to it. That's it. Beautiful. This one, I have put the three really fine coats of a fine spray the oil-based finish 
oil-based poly in a spray. Really fine finish. It could probably do with a little, little, little bit more drying. As I said, the reason that we're doing that is because if you do want to put layer upon layer upon layer of a water-based finish, if you're not confident maybe using the oil-based finish uh, and you want to use a water-based finish, then to stop reactivating the water-based glue underneath, it needs to have a barrier and the barrier is going to be this, okay? Um, hoping that it is dry enough. Get another brush. Don't use the brush that you've used with your oil-based paint uh, finish. Don't do that. I'm just going to get in there. Give your lacquer. <laughs> Give your lacquer a stir. Don't do what I'm doing, please. Give it a stir. There we go. This is the Annie Sloan gloss lacquer. And... Uh, yeah, at the very least, give it a stir and pop her on. Let's go. You can, because there is a barrier there, if you want, you can water down the lacquer a little bit. It's not going to affect your image not going to reactivate that glue for reasons that I already told you. You would use a better brush than this, but you get the general gist. There we go. It's going to be a little bit white until it dries. But again, I hope you can see it has not affected the image at all. Okay? Not at all. And sorry, <laughs> uh, my phone started ringing off the hook and my camera stopped for some reason. But I'm just going to show you that again. You can see that that water based finish, even though it's wet still, but you would see it instantly. You would see it instantly. It is not affecting that image at all, okay, because you've got the barrier there. Can you see? And there we go. That's your big tutorial. So we've got that one, the three different methods. Uh, each method is going to, you're going to have a perfect result with these papers. This is the Renaissance flowers that we love. And yeah, if you've got any questions, sing out. You know you can shoot me a message and you know where to purchase. I'll put a link in the in the thing. That's it. Have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.